set. We're awaiting the arrival of Secretary Ernest Meniz, or Ernie, to Juan Lee. He's on his way. Uh, some of you might have seen in the newspaper the other day that uh, Dr. Meniz recently threw out the first ceremonial pitch at a Boston Red Sox game. Apparently he played a in center field when he was younger and was recruited for the major, so I know you're going to give him a nice rousing welcome when he gets here. Before he gets here, and Pat Damer will be introducing him, we have some presentations to make. But first of all, it's been a great morning. Nice round of applause for Greater Boston Science and Math Team, our middle school champion. They're sitting over here, they're the people with the widest grins. They've been working so hard together for the past year, and uh, they've watched all the tapes. They knew exactly what to do when they got here. They've been practicing after school on the weekends. They come from different schools, and it was just perfect chemistry, the way you guys did it up here, and you should be really proud of yourselves, and we hope to see you back here on the Science Bowl again. And our national high school champion, repeat champion, in fact, the coach told me in the last seven years, Mira Loma has finished two, one, two, one, three, we'll forgive them that, one and one. Congratulations to Mira Loma. And even though when Jan Tyler was walking by, one of you accidentally hit her on the head with a water bottle, we're still gonna give you your trophy. We're still doing that. Pat's gonna join me on stage and we have some checks for our top 16 high school teams and our top eight middle school teams. We're gonna ask you to come up to the stage as we call you, and I know you're gonna give them a nice round of applause, $1,000 for your school's science departments. Let's start with our top 16 high schools. We're gonna do our top 16 high schools first. Would you welcome, please, Baton Rouge Magnet High School from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Come on up. Pat, are these checks negotiable? They will be. <laughs> right behind them, could we have from Murray, Kentucky, Callaway County High School, one of our top 16 teams. Could you ask them to leave their name badges back at their seat? Makes for a better picture. And those of you on your way up, don't worry about it, but the subsequent teams, would you leave your name badge on your chair, please, or hide it some way because it just makes for a, a nicer shot. No, no name badges, please, as you come up. Here comes Callaway County High School. Right behind them, from Carmel, Indiana, Carmel High School, come on up. Indiana, a powerhouse at both the elementary, excuse me, at the middle school and the high school level, having had past champions and always top contenders. $1,000 for Carmel High School from Carmel, Indiana. Nice big check. Right behind them, could we have the team from Doherty Valley High School from San Ramon, California? Doherty Valley. I think Doherty Valley may be here for the first time. Is this your first time here? Wow, nice way to make an entrance. First time on Science Bowl and you make it to the top 16, Doherty Valley. Nicely done. Our next $1,000 check goes to a team that is familiar to us here at the Science Bowl from Storrs, Connecticut. Please welcome E.O. Smith High School. E.O. Smith. Come on up. That ramp provides a nice entrance.
That is E.O. Smith High School, and behind them, could we please have come to the stage from Boulder, Colorado, Fairview High School. Fairview. You guys made an impression. You're getting a little more applause than, than we've had thus far. Great team, Fairview High School from Boulder. Behind them, from Evans, Georgia, Lakeside High School, one of our top 16. Which school was this? Uh, Fairview. High Fairview. Lakeside waiting in the wing? Nice reward for outstanding play here in the National Science Bowl. Lakeside High School on their way up. Next, a local school, perennial contender from nearby Silver Spring, Maryland, Montgomery Blair High School. Montgomery Blair. Montgomery Blair, notable also if you follow the Intel Science Talent Search as the school with the most finalists. Montgomery Blair, welcome. One of the schools that did not get a plane ticket to get here. Yes. Behind Montgomery Blair, would you please welcome Morgantown High School from Morgantown, West Virginia. You guys were already good. Next, for a $1,000 check from Durham, North Carolina, the renowned North Carolina School of Science and Mathematics, North Carolina. North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Please welcome next a team that has been here a number of years is certainly in the double digits, a familiar team from Pullman High School in Pullman, Washington. Two more schools on our list. Next, another local team, now tied with Mira Loma for the most championships ever, Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology. The pride of Alexandria, Virginia. Congratulations, nice to have you here. And lastly, from Marietta, Georgia, Walton High School, $1,000. That means Brian Lee, you get to take home $1,000 plus a free Frisbee. Which one is Brian? <laughs> now that I've thoroughly embarrassed you, thanks for playing along. Nice round of applause for our 16 top schools. And we'll be recognizing Westview and Mira Loma and Regis High School when the secretary gets here. You too will be getting checks. Don't worry. Next, our top eight middle school teams, they too take $1,000 home for their school's science departments. 
first from Scottsdale, Arizona basis, Scottsdale. Congratulations. The Blue Shirts Parade begins. Next, from San Jose, California, would you please welcome the students from Bret Hart Middle School and their coach. Come on. Behind Bret Hart, a team that has been in contention every year they've been here, from Fremont, California, home of the most Science Bowl champions, Hopkins Junior High. Hopkins. confirmation that they were indeed middle school champs before. Next, from Bellevue, Washington, say hello to Science Infinity Club, one of our top eight. Come on out, Science. And the last of our top eight, and we will be recognizing Greater Boston, the J Droid Science Club, and Tacoma Park Middle School when the secretary gets here, the team from Peachtree Corners, Georgia, Wesleyan School. Wesleyan, it's your time. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Nice to have you here. Nice round of applause for our junior highs, our middle schools. Now, we also had an electric car competition. Our middle school students participated. They designed and built model electric cars out of recycled materials. This competition tested creative engineering skills, gave them a hands-on experience with alternative fuel technology. There are two components to the car competition an engineering design challenge, and then the car race. The winners of these two events received trophies and $500 for their school science departments at an award ceremony yesterday, but would like to recognize them today and have them stand up. Would you join me in congratulating the winner of the engineering design challenge from Billings, Montana, Will James Middle School. Will James, there they are. Great job. And the winner of Sunday's car race with a time of 6.05 seconds, winning for the second year in a row from Fresno, California, Edison Computech Middle School. Where are they? Right over there. And one more very deserved shout out. You know, 240,000 of you participated in regional competitions for the National Science Bowl. So you are the best of the best, the elite that made it through all of that competition. The regional events were hosted by the Department of Energy Laboratories and Facilities, other federal agencies, other institutions and public utilities throughout the country. And you know, it only happens because of the regional coordinators at all of those sites. And when you go to lunch, there's a beautiful display back there of all of those facilities and all of the uh, people that work at them, I urge you to look at that. Could we have all of the regional representatives who are here today stand so we can recognize you? Science Bowl wouldn't happen without you. Would not happen without you. And one more thank you to the DOE staff that has been manning the tables up here, all of our moderators for doing an outstanding job as they always do. Could all of our DOE people stand up so we can recognize them?
My understanding is the secretary is about five minutes away, so we're going to take a five-minute break. And uh, Dr. Moniz will be here shortly, and we will be presenting our final trophies and hearing more importantly, or as importantly, his remarks. We're looking forward to that. So a five-minute break. Our guest of honor is here. We've been awaiting Secretary Moniz. And I'd like to invi invite Acting Director of the Office of Science, Pat Damer, back to the microphone to give our guest a proper introduction. Pat. Thank you again. OK. It's my pleasure now to welcome Secretary of Energy Ernest Moniz uh, to uh, help with the final awards. Uh, prior to coming to the Department of Energy, uh, he was the Cecil and Ida Green Professor of Physics and Engineering Systems at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he was a faculty member since 1973. He also headed MIT's Department of Physics and the Bates Linear Accelerator Center. In keeping with the theme that we started last Friday with our plenary speaker for Science Day, Carl Haber, uh, careers can take unexpected directions, and Secretary Moniz exemplifies that. In addition to his physics career in nuclear physics, he was also the founding director of the MIT Energy Initiative and the MIT Laboratory for Energy and the Environment. He's been a leader of multidisciplinary studies on the future of nuclear power, coal, nuclear fuel cycles, natural gas, and solar energy in a low-carbon world. Uh, Secretary Moniz, you should be interested to know that um, the students uh, talk about their aspirations. And uh, one of them, uh, we learned from uh, David Zarin, uh, wants to be just like Ernie Moniz, his hero his science hero. So come on up and help us. <laughs> well, this is, this is a great day to be here, I must say, because uh, it's probably been said many times, but it really is true that this is, uh, this is looking, looking at our future in terms of uh, this, the uh, science and engineering contributors uh, of, the, our, of the, next, the next decades. Uh, but anyway, so thank you, uh, Pat. And, um, uh, and also, let me uh, thank uh, all the people who really made this happen, the Office of Science staff, uh, I know m many volunteers, of course, the coaches uh, for their guidance. Uh, and most importantly, of course, the, the, the competitors. Uh, and so I think you all deserve a, a great, uh, great amount of thanks for, for coming here. And hopefully it was a lot of fun uh, for the students. Um, I'm told that uh, over 9,000 high school students and more than 5,000 middle school students uh, from all 50 states, uh, D.C. and Puerto Rico, uh, participated uh, in this year's regional uh, competitions. So as Pat said, uh, I did spend uh, uh, 40 years uh, at, uh, at MIT, um, and, uh, and I have to say that what I really miss, uh, uh, in, my, in this new job, it's pretty interesting and it's fun, but uh, I still have time every now and then to miss the students uh, who really, uh, really were just, just, just terrific. Um, I'll just say a few words, in fact, about uh, some of the things that inspired me uh, in, in science. Uh, and, um, and then come back uh, to, uh, to today. But, you know, when I went to high school, um, uh, that was, uh, those were the post-Sputnik days. Uh, and there was lots going on in terms of changes of STEM education, uh, satellites going up, uh, all kinds of uh, uh, activity that really inspired uh, a, lot of, a lot of us into, uh, into, into science. Um, the, um, a, a very important uh, uh, time for me was when I had the opportunity to visit Bell Labs in those days. And uh, probably many of you here, many of the students at least, uh, aren't familiar with, uh, with Bell Labs as one of the great uh, science institutions uh, for, many, uh, for many decades. Uh, 
Is that a woodpecker? I don't know. <laughs> um, the, uh, anyway, uh, uh, Bell Labs uh, had all, I mean, the, the, the developments that they made in that laboratory uh, uh, really are behind many of the things that we are, we carry around today, like, like cell phones, uh, uh, or in our living rooms, uh, things like flat, flat screen uh, TVs, uh, many, many just fundamental um, uh, 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 discoveries, the uh, transistor uh, underlying, of course, much of uh, electronics, but also uh, in their search for trying to understand microwave communications. They had all of this noise in their system. And once they eliminated the pigeon droppings as the source, uh, they have finally came around to discovering the background radiation in our universe, uh, Big Bang. So, it's, it's, so this kind of serendipity uh, was also a, a huge, part of, huge part of doing science uh, and, and discovering these, uh, these new things. The, uh, uh, I, uh, uh, I went down there and saw uh, one of the first satellites, uh, uh, Telstar. It was the first telecommunications satellite. They were just developing it, uh, covered with uh, 3,600 solar cells uh, at that time. And uh, in fact, I think if you go to the, uh, to the uh, Air and Space Museum, uh, you can find uh, the model of this Telstar satellite. So it was really interesting to, to be able to see how all of this science and technology uh, came, came together. And actually, uh, along the lines of a kind of serendipity, and then subsequently uh, to that involving satellites, uh, I became part of a small company uh, who, at that same period before I was there, uh, in the 19, 1960s, they put up the very first uh, X-ray satellite uh, for NASA, and lo and behold, they created X-ray astronomy uh, as they found uh, surprising uh, sources in the universe. So science is just a great journey, and, and I think uh, the opportunity to have these experiences uh, early on uh, in, your, uh, in, your, in your studies uh, is just uh, uh, terribly important. Today uh, is just as exciting. Uh, and I'll just say a little bit about, in my, in our, in my current, of course, focus of, of energy, uh, the kinds of fundamental tools that we're dealing with, you know, big data and large-scale computation, the frontier of being able to use uh, those tools for, uh, for discovery, high-energy plasmas, advanced materials uh, uh, ubiquitous across, across energy, building materials from the bottom up, 3D printing, building technologies from, from the bottom up. So these are all areas uh, where uh, there's going to be just tremendous opportunity and excitement. Just to elaborate on that briefly, uh, we uh, at the Department of Energy, uh, in our laboratories, uh, in our uh, university partners, uh, et cetera, we are uh, advancing uh, technologies for your future. Uh, and you're going to have to pick up the flag and, and run with it uh, because uh, we are facing a real challenge uh, over these next two, three, four decades of having to change our whole energy system. Uh, today, it's, it's 80 percent roughly fossil fuels, and we need to eliminate 80 percent of all the carbon dioxide uh, that we are putting in the atmosphere by, by mid-century. This is a huge transformation. It's all about technology. Uh, when, when we look at coal, uh, we need to, if we're going to use coal, we have to capture the CO2. What are we going to do with all that carbon dioxide? Well, cutting edge science, you need a big use for it if you're going to use all that CO2. So CO2 plus water plus sunlight making fuels, that's one of our big projects. A lot of, long way to go, but that's pretty exciting stuff with enormous, enormous impact. Oil, of course, in this country, we're producing more gas and oil than we have, but we still have to reduce oil dependence. How do we do that? Make our vehicles very efficient, cars and trucks. How do we do that? Lightweight materials. Um, use large-scale computation to model, to, to develop new engines, to minimize aerodynamic uh, impacts. Uh, we need new fuels, new biology to convert biomass, not food, but biomass, 
into new fuels, maybe drop-in fuels that go right, go, go right in your car today, batteries, fuel cells, um, solar panels, new organic materials for, for solar, uh, open up new, uh, new, new uses. We can, we can just keep going down the line, uh, and there are enormous science and technology challenges that we will need to transform our energy system uh, over these next decades. And again, uh, the students out here, all of these students uh, are those upon whom we will count uh, for, that, uh, for that to happen. So I think um, with that, uh, uh, I will end my brief remarks, and uh, hopefully we can now move on towards recognizing uh, many of those who have done so well in this competition. Again, we really appreciate uh, your, your engaging in this, uh, and uh, we look forward to your accomplishments uh, in, the, in, in the years ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary, for your, your obvious passion for, for energy and for your, for your inspiration for these young people. Thank you for persevering through the woodpecker, and congratulations on that first pitch on Earth Day with the Red Sox. Great job. <clears throat> Just to show it's been a big sports week, uh, yeah. in addition to the first pitch on Earth Day at Fenway, yesterday was the green flag labeled American ethanol to start a NASCAR race <laughs> in Virginia. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Energy all the time. <clears throat> We're going to bring our three schools up, our top three schools from the high school competition. Each of these teams is going to receive a trophy, individual medals, certificates, and $1,000 for their school science department. Our third place team from New York City, would you please welcome Regis High School. Regis, come on up. Our grade school. They're rushing, don't trip. We're not giving your trophies away. Take your time. And we have an actual science bowl for you. Come on out and meet Secretary Moniz. Let's give him a nice round of applause. Our third place team. Great job, gentlemen. <laughs> Wonderful. Today's second place team, the runner up. As I said earlier, this is their first time ever to the National Science Bowl. What a debut they have had. They also are getting a trophy, individual medals, certificates, $1,000 for their school science department. And get this, the whole team will be going on a five-day science trip to Yellowstone and Grand Teton Parks, including a fully guided tour of Great Salt Lake, Yellowstone National Park, and Grand Teton National Park, Many adventures, adventures await. This sounds like the amazing race, including seeing Old Faithful, hiking the Continental Divide, and taking a boat trip down the Snake River. We all want to go with you. Westview High School, come on out. Great job. Thank you for a thrilling performance this morning. Please meet Secretary Moniz.
Terrific final match. <laughs> And we're going to save our biggest trophy, today's big winner, for just a moment. We're going to go back into our middle schools. Let's uh, bring up to the stage our third place finisher in the middle school competition. They're getting $1,000 for their school science department. Each one of these team members will get a trophy, certificates, and there is a trophy for the school. Last year's runner-up, that tells you how talented they are, third place this year from nearby Silver Spring, Maryland, Tacoma Park Middle School. Tacoma Park, come on out. <clears throat> Hometown favorites. Congratulations. Who gets to hold the bowl? Great job, great job. Next, we congratulate our second place team in the middle school competition. Their first time ever here at the National Science Bowl. Again, what a debut they have made from Wayne, New Jersey, J. Droids Science Club, J. Droids. Look at the smiles. Proud of themselves and they should be. They're taking their own direction. They can't wait to meet the secretary. And our first place team, number one. One more round of applause for these young men and women. Yes. Number one out of all 48 middle schools competing, they rose to the top with a dramatic performance today from Andover, Massachusetts, the Greater Boston School of Science and Math from Andover. Come on up. Number one middle school in the country. Here they come, congratulations. Nicely done. All that hard work after school weekends in each other's kitchens paying off. Well done. Greater Boston. First time here as well. And our last presentation today goes to a school that has made its trip up here many, many times. As I said, in the last seven years, they have finished either first or second or third four championships in seven years. The powerhouse of Sacramento. Where are they going? They're going to Alaska for nine days. They're going to explore the Cooper River, the Copper River, Copper River Delta. It's different. They're going to look at the highly prized stocks in the run of the wild salmon. They're going to experience the mystical appeal of old growth hemlock and spruce. While hiking through the Chugach National Forest, they're going to water raft down the Sheridan River and travel across the scenic Prince William Sound and Orca Inlet, home to the world's largest population of sea otters. And this team, I think they went to Alaska this year, and I'm sure they want to go back. 
would you please welcome our national champion, first out of 68 schools, Mira Loma High School. Two of the team members returning from last year and our coach here for 15 years at the same school. Mira Loma, have a great time in Alaska. Send us a postcard or two, all right? See you next year. Nice round of applause, Mira Loma High School. Just one brief, one brief comment. And, and to, the, uh, to the winners, I just want to note that I'll be in Alaska the following week, and I'm going to check out your behavior. <laughs> The Department of Energy Office of Science wants to thank all of you and your, all the coaches and the families for all the preparation and hard work and support. This doesn't just happen. You folks got here because it was purposeful and you put in the time. I want to special thank, give a special thanks to all the volunteers who also make this possible. And now, I know you're ready for lunch. It's been a long day. You've got long travels to go. Here is Jan Tyler. She made it all happen. Hope you had a great time. Hope to see you next year. Bye-bye. <laughs>